Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? SpongeBob SquarePants, of course. But our square-painted friend and his nautical nonsense aren't on the agenda today. Instead, we turn to the small, dark thorn in the spongy side of the show. None other than Sheldon J. Plankton. Plankton may be small, but his impact on Bikini Bottom through the years has been huge. Even if things don't really go to plan. That's the story of Plankton's life. So much potential, so little to show for it. Well, I suppose he has a ghost town of a restaurant and a robot wife, but there could have been so much more for him. So where did it all go wrong? What pushed him down the path of evil? Why is he so obsessed with the Krabby Patty formula? Well, today, we're going to answer all that and more as we take a look through the tragic backstory of Plankton. So let's shift into Maximum Overdrive. Now, this may come as a surprise to you, but Plankton wasn't always the evil invertebrate we all know today. And in the beginning, he even had a best friend. And it's someone you may find familiar, Eugene Krabs. That's right, Mr. Krabs and Plankton were best friends. They first met as newborn babies in the same hospital on the same day. And from that day on, they were joined at the hip. Wherever Plankton went, Mr. Krabs wasn't far behind. They formed a tight relationship with one another, sticking up for each other whenever something like a school bully came along. Away from their friendship, though, things were less than perfect, especially for Mr. Krabs, whose family, well, to say that they were poor would be an understatement, with the kids calling him Rag Boy because of his hand-me-down clothes. I guess Mr. Krabs' life really is a rags-to-riches story. Plankton's family, meanwhile, weren't rich either, so the boys put their brains together to come up with a way to get themselves out of this money hole. I bet if someone made a better burger, they'd have a fatter stack of loot. Their idea to get rich quick came about after the only burger joint in Bikini Bottom and their favorite after-school hangout, Stinky Burgers, was closed down due to health violations. You'd think it would have been shut down earlier considering how obvious it is that a place called Stinky Burgers would sell Stinky Burgers. Plankton and Crab saw a gap in the market and decided to create their own fast food restaurant with the hope that not only will they earn an extra buck, but the kids who've made them outcasts might finally accept them as being cool. But taking inspiration from Stinky Burgers, the duo can only find an affordable setup in the middle of a dump. There, they go to work on perfecting a tasty patty for the public of Bikini Bottom to try. And after some fine-tuning, they settle on the Plab Patty, christened by combining both of Plankton and Mr. Krab's names together. But of course, no one likes their creation. Hey! Your burgers are even worse than Stinky! In fact, their new business venture had the opposite effect that they wanted. Suddenly, they have overhead costs, and everyone around town thinks their burgers are worse than the ones served at Stinky Burgers. But as it's the only place to get a burger, they continue to buy and eat them anyway. This is where Plankton and Krabs' friendship first starts to fracture, as Plankton begins to take the lion's share of credit for the burger recipe, and he sees it as a first step in his plan for domination. Maybe he's always had evil genius tendencies after all. Well, technically, that's what Mr. Krabs says. From Plankton's point of view, he valued the customer first, and it was the money-mad crabs who ended their friendship over doubling his profits by cutting out a business partner. But Karen, Plankton's computer wife, who was their security system at the time, had captured most of what actually happened. You're both liars. That's not how it happened at all. It turns out that the kids quickly grew tired of their stinking patties in a smelly dump and left Plankton and crabs without business. Until old man Jenkins came along. The duo convinced him to take a bite, which poisoned him. This is what really sparked their argument as the two blamed each other for poisoning the old man. Their argument ends with a tug of war over their formula which causes it to rip into pieces. Plankton storms out of their smelly burger shack by saying if Krabs wants a fight over the recipe, he's got one. But little did he know that his anger would cause the creation of the Krabby Patty. When Plankton left in a fit of rage, he caused a shelf of ingredients to accidentally fall into the patty batter, creating the perfect patty. When the Plab Patty formula ripped apart, the piece Plankton grabbed only had one ingredient on it, chum, with the kids in Bikini Bottom willing to eat anything, and chum being better than the awful plaid patty. Plankton invented his own brand, a brand we all know, the Chum Bucket. Thinking he'd get one over on his former friend, now foe, Plankton decided to go and test his new food franchise back at Poseidon Elementary School. But, of course, Mr. Krabs was there to steal his thunder, and his customers with his own branded food, the Krabby Patty. The kids overwhelmingly preferred the Krabby 
Krabby Patty to Plankton's chum, and in an instant, Mr. Krabs was famous and successful, leaving his lifelong friend in his dust. The jealousy, anger, and the feeling of betrayal soon consumed Plankton, making him vow to one day steal the Krabby Patty formula, run Mr. Krabs out of business, to finally take his mantle as a super successful entrepreneur. Now, that is what I call a tragic backstory. A loss of a friend, plunging deeper into poverty, seeing someone you worked with become so popular. I mean, you can totally see why the Plankton we know is so bitter. There's a good number of years between his backstory and the start of the show. Plankton settles down with Karen, he goes to college, and finally opens up a restaurant of his own. But by the time Plankton appears for the first time in an episode, you can really see how time hasn't healed him at all, but instead deepened his emotional wounds. The episode begins on a normal day at the Krusty Krab, when a Krabby Patty goes crazy and seems like it's moving on its own. A much older Mr. Krabs traps the Patty and reveals Plankton is the cause of its erratic movement. This is Plankton stealing me booty! A pathetic attempt to steal a patty just as he promised to years ago. Now, Mr. Krabs isn't surprised by this patty pirate, suggesting that this happens often, and has happened for a very long time. So even though this is the first time as an audience we see Plankton, it's safe to assume that this food feud has gone on for decades. Plankton is now firmly on the side of evil, and will do anything to get even with Krabs. He notices SpongeBob as a new recruit, and sees the pure-souled sponge as a way to get what he wants. He targets SpongeBob's kind nature, manipulating him into being a friend, giving him gifts like a golden spatula. Shing. Sparkle, sparkle. Wow. So that in return, SpongeBob will give him the formula. But SpongeBob isn't that easily swayed and doesn't give in to Plankton's demands, tossing him aside like society did many years ago. This only enrages Plankton further, who now believes if SpongeBob doesn't want to give him the formula, he'll make him. He goes from trying to manipulate SpongeBob to fully puppeteering him using a mind control device. His plan is to steal a patty and to bring it back to a fully fleshed out chum bucket restaurant, which doubles as his evil genius lab where he can analyze. It. The plan, as we all know, ends up backfiring. But it's clear to see that years of being an outcast has pushed Plankton to the brink. And this is only his first episode. Plankton's plans throughout the years do seem to push the limits of sanity. Like the time he created a robot version of Mr. Krabs in the episode Imitation Krabs. It's one thing to try and steal a Krabby Patty formula, but to basically create an entire robo version of someone you're deeply envious of? I mean, when you know the context of the backstory between Plankton and Mr. Krabs, it's actually really Really disturbing. In the episode The Algae's Always Greener, Plankton is at his wit's end with trying to steal the Krabby Patty formula, seeing Krabs living it up, while he comes home to a barren restaurant with no food and wife, who for all intents and purposes isn't real. It soon dawns on him, however, that the life he's always wanted to live can be achieved by using his supreme intellect and inventing a machine which plunges him into the mind of himself in an alternate reality where it's Plankton who owns and runs the Krusty Krab. Obsessed with his new life, Plankton just just wants to settle down to enjoy a burger and relax. But with success comes hard work, like giving SpongeBob his weekly performance review, dealing with unhappy customers, a grumpy Squidward, a daughter, and his new archenemy, Krabs. Well, it, old archenemy, but you know, switch lives. You know what I mean. Krabs is plankton in this world, burdened by bitterness. His goal is to destroy the Krusty Krab and to steal the patty formula. And just like plankton, the constant battle against Krabs and the life of a successful man is too much for Plankton to handle, and he aborts his otherworldly life for the stress-free nobody he's always been. Now, this sounds like some form of twisted therapy that does actually work for a short while. Yeah, sure, I mean, I guess it did work, but it's not long before Plankton's back on the scene to settle the score. In the episode Plankton's Army, Plankton has come to the realization that his brain power alone is not enough to overthrow the Krusty Krab, and that there's strength in numbers. The only problem is he doesn't have any friends, so he hatches a plan to go around town to find some evil doers to be his henchmen, but it doesn't end well for poor old Plankton. He's left limping back to the drawing board to figure out how he can bolster his attack. He soon realizes that the size of his minions isn't the main thing, but the volume, and being a part of the Plankton family, he knows he can get his hands on an army. So he begins putting a team together, making calls to distant relatives he's only ever seen in a phone book. Plankton's patty obsession is now infecting his his family. He's getting his own flesh and blood to do his dirty work. That's how much of a grip the formula has on him, that he's willing to put his family at risk to get what he wants. He assumes that the family will be exactly like him, super smart criminal masterminds with the ability to overthrow cities, never mind the crusty crap. But when he greets his family, they're not the brainiest bunch. Gee, Billy Bob, Billy 
Bullet Jim, Billy 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 Banana Fan of Pope Billy. He introduces them to Karen, who finds out that his real name is Sheldon, and then she breaks into a fit of laughter. <laughs> Sheldon! Will you please? belittling him in front of his family. If that's not bad enough, she also, behind his back, lights up the world Sheldon with arrows pointing right at him, making his family laugh at him too. So the only people in the world Plankton can connect with in any meaningful way think he's a laughing stock. Ouch. He rallies the group though, and forms a strong alliance to break into the Krusty Krab. They infiltrate the restaurant, lock Mr. Krabs up in a toilet, break into his safe, and read the formula. The formula is a pinch of salt, three teaspoons of chopped onions, a cup of love, and four heaping pounds of freshly ground plankton? Oh, jeez. But old Crafty Krabs planted a decoy formula in his safe, just in case Plankton ever succeeded, and he kept the real version at home under his mattress. So in this episode, Plankton was publicly humiliated by both his family and his wife, was beaten up by the criminals of Bikini Bottom, and now he thinks everyone loves eating Plankton. That is some serious trauma. Things from there on out just got worse for our microscopic mischief maker. Every single plan immediately foiled, the Krusty Krab growing in success and stature while Plankton Plankton became totally invisible. He even developed a fear of whales due to Mr. Krabs' daughter, which, to be fair, could be from the earlier episode when he had to deal with her. But Plankton started out as a force to be reckoned with, and now you just kinda pity him. But bubbling away under Plankton's surface was one final scheme, a plan to end all plans. A plan not just for the Krabby Patty formula, but for world domination. A plan that's evil, that's diabolical, that's lemon-scented. None other than Plan Z. Plankton's infamous Plan Z is the evil star of the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, and really does cement his legacy as being an evil genius. The plan was born from pure jealousy, after a reclusive Plankton was spying on the media frenzy around the Krusty Krab. Why was there a frenzy? Well, because Eugene was finally opening a second restaurant. A second one? And Plankton hasn't even had one customer. The attention and the success that his old friend Mr. Krabs was getting was too much, and forced Plankton to find this sinister scheme, which was filed away, almost never to be found. The the plan is a simple one. Steal King Neptune's crown and frame Mr. Krabs with the hopes that the king would execute him. Yeah, really. But if that wasn't bad enough, now with no Krabs and SpongeBob and Patrick out of the way trying to save the crustaceous cheapskate, Plankton can funnel hungry members of Bikini Bottom into the chum bucket, where with every meal comes a mind control device. In no time at all, Plankton takes over the town, has all the success and attention he's ever dreamed of, even overthrowing King Neptune. All the Bikini Bottomites chant, all hail Plankton. Plankton. This is Plankton out of control, his warped mind running wild. The young genius back at Stinky Burgers would shudder at who he's turned into. But SpongeBob and Patrick manage to put a stop to his evil tyranny, and once again, life goes back to normal. The movie ends with a stampede of people stepping all over Plankton, as they've done his whole life. Then he's sent packing to prison to reflect on his actions. Come on, I was just kidding! <laughs> Come on, you guys knew that, didn't you? With Plankton now reaching rock bottom, metaphorically speaking, because rock bottom is a, a real place, the only way is up. And with his past behind him, maybe he can change. We get to see how far he's grown in the episode New Leaf, where he gives up the feud with crabs and actually gives up the dream of ever owning a restaurant. His new idea is to convert the chum bucket into a gift shop. Obviously, Mr. Krabs doesn't believe Plankton and thinks he's scheming under the surface to try and pry the formula from his claws once more. But as as Krabs warns his employees to keep their eyes peeled, Plankton unveils the Chumporium gift shop. Mr. Krabs isn't convinced though, and starts collecting items from the shop, checking it for hidden microphones and cameras. The paranoia has fully set in. Plankton's admission of defeat and letting go of his past demons has infected Mr. Krabs with the same obsession that nearly ruined Plankton's life. He can't help but watch the new gift shop 24-7, on tenterhooks that his old enemy may get one over on him. The silence and commitment to his new business from Plankton drives Mr. Krabs to the edge. Things overspill when he goes to visit Plankton, formula in hand, taunting him that he knows what he's up to. But Plankton pleads with him and says he has no interest in the formula anymore, even declining to take a peek at the formula and tells Mr. Krabs that he's the one who's got a problem. Problem? I don't have a problem. 
You're the one with the problem. Mr. Krabs becomes enraged and starts to destroy the Chumporium, smashing lava lamps and snow globes and various other knickknacks. Is it because he really can't believe Plankton has turned over a new leaf? Or is it because he can't stand to see him happy? I think I'll save that question for a Mr. Krabs video. A heartbroken Plankton is left in the ruins of his livelihood as he kicks Krabs out. But as Mr. Krabs leaves, he drops the formula, hoping it'll spark Plankton back into evil action. But instead, he gets this. Hey, Krabs! Huh? Huh? I knew you'd come back! You forgot something. <laughs> Mr. Krabs now sees the error of his ways and musters up the strength to call Plankton later that night and sincerely apologizes for his behavior, admitting that he cares about his old friend. Mr. Krabs asks to meet Plankton the next day for a soda to set things straight. The two meet and Mr. Krabs asks for a clean slate to start over. So just as we saw many years ago, the duo are friends once more. They then sit at sundown as the sun sets on their new rivalry, the two reminisce on old times when Krabs tells Plankton that he has a gift for him, the formula. He sees that Plankton has changed and wants to set the record straight, righting the wrongs of the duo's past. But everything isn't as it seems. This was a convoluted, extremely well thought out plan from Plankton to tug on the heartstrings of his former friend to finally get what he thinks is rightfully his. He sprints back to the Chumporium to read his prize. And when he opens the formula, just as usual, Mr. Krabs is two steps ahead. He appears and tells Plankton he was playing an even more convoluted game and he will never be able to catch him out. Personally though, I think that despite how that episode ended, there was a lot of healing done between Mr. Krabs and Plankton. And it's clear to see, on some level, they deeply care about each other. They may seem like enemies, but really the line between an enemy and a best friend is thin. For a kid's show, Sheldon J. Plankton is a very complex character. We've seen today how someone's past can so easily shape their future. And if Plankton's story began a little kinder, you never know what he would have achieved. His mind has endless potential. He could have been a force for good instead of bad. But on the flip side, he could have easily helped him Himself. He didn't have to keep the baggage of his best friend betraying him for decades, becoming obsessed with beating him. But without that, we wouldn't have the plankton we know and love. Hey, thank you all so much for watching. Let me know down below what your favorite plankton moment is. And if you've got any suggestions for another character deep dive, let me know. But for now, I'll see you all next time.